Okay, so first we 3D scan the object, throw it into Unity, and click play. Unity labels everything automatically, so we don't have to do anything by hand. And then we train for 8 or 10 hours. Aha! It works! Yes! I wanted to play around with running machine learning models in Unity again, but I know if I do that, I'm gonna to wanna to train my own models. Now, training your own models sucks because collecting data is a nightmare. Stay, stay there, stay. Just stay still. And having to label stuff by hand will make you wanna kill yourself. Sick, only 3,000 more of these to go. So the idea with synthetic data is you have a computer generate and label all the training data for you. Video game engines are perfect for this and Unity's ML agents already does this. Now, the main thing holding back my ML projects is the fact that, well, I don't know shit about machine learning, but the main thing holding back most other people's projects, people that do know what they're doing, is the fact that they don't have good data and it's really hard to come by. Now, you know, all the big companies like Apple, Google, Facebook, they have all the data. And if they don't have the data, they have the resources to create that data. You've probably heard the saying that data is the new oil. Now, without getting too political, you can see how synthetic data creation could help democratize technological advancement. Anyway, in my case, I wanna train my own object detector, so I'm gonna use Unity to generate and label all my images for me, and then pass those to TensorFlow for training and inference in Python. So I wanna be able to detect these Pokemon here, but I'm gonna need a 3D model. All right, so here's a couple. Uh, they aren't exactly the same, but I don't know. Let's roll with them for now. Now we need bounding boxes, so we can just use Unity's built-in function to get the bounds of the mesh renderer in the image. Piece of cake. Um, what? So if we plot the 3D points of the renderer's bounds, you can see that uh, they are with respect to the object and not the camera that's viewing the object. <sighs> Fuck. This took a minute to figure out, and it's not performant in any way, shape, or form, but what I ended up doing was getting all the vertices of the object, converting each point from world space to screen space, and then finding the max and min of both the X and the Y. Now we need to convert these boxes to a format that TensorFlow can deal with. So TensorFlow needs everything in this TF record format that uses protocol buffers. I have no idea what that is, and I don't even want to know but they do give you some nice examples to work with. So from Unity, we can take our pictures and write all that info to a file. Now these files will have the picture number, window size, the object's label, and box coordinates. Then in Python, we can use the TF record examples to write a script that parses our text file from Unity and creates a TF record file from our synthetic training data. Beautiful. Now we can split our images into two folders with 20% of the total images into a test folder and the remaining images into a train folder. The last file we need is a label map file that just maps our object's labels to an ID. For this, I just loop through each object parent and find all the children with unique names and add them to a list and we write that to a file in the format that TensorFlow wants. Now, I trained an object detector once before uh, to recognize some medical objects like three years ago. And the only thing I remember about that project was that I could not get it to work at all until I took pictures with a ton of different background images. I remember my first idea to get images was to take a video of the objects, and then I made a Python script that just took frames out of the video. This did not work even a little bit. Eventually, I wised up and I took pictures with all different backgrounds, and then it worked. So in this case, I used Fatcon Batch Downloader to download a bunch of indoor images from Google and put them into Unity. I can loop through this folder and change the background every time Unity takes a picture. So at this point, I have everything I need, technically. So the general consensus on Google seems to be that you need like a thousand images of each object and you need to train for like 20,000 steps, which is gonna take like, I don't know, 10 hours. All right, here we go. It started. All right, this is fine. We can handle this. It won't be too long. See where we're at. 2,000 steps? What the fuck? Why is this taking so long? It's a $2,000 
All right, moment of truth. 27,000 steps. Wow, literally nothing. Awesome. Honestly, I'm not even upset right now because this is just how all my projects go. So I really have no idea what the hell is going on here, but my intuition is telling me that our 3D model is not similar enough to these toys that we're trying to track. So I found this photogrammetry app that lets you scan an object and generate a 3D model. I scanned all the objects and threw them into Unity. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, well this, this still sucks, but at least it's working a little bit, so we're on the right track. All right, so now we need to do some heavy experimentation and tweaking to see what gives us the best results. I made this interface called iChangeable that has one function called change random. Every time we take a picture in Unity, we loop through all the objects in a scene, and if they implement this interface, we call this change random function. So I made a bunch of scripts that just randomize everything. One randomly changes the position of the objects in the image, one changes lighting, one changes the color of the object. You get the idea. I'm not exaggerating when I say I generated new data and trained this thing every single day for more than a month. It just became part of my daily routine. Generate new images, train.py, go to bed. Wake up, test, nothing works, make some changes, repeat. I tried randomizing everything, using different shaders to modify color, changing the number of images, the number of training steps, I tried everything. Honestly, the real reason I even decided to try this project was because I wanted to see if it was possible to make a robust detector from a single 3D object. So currently we're 3D scanning this object, so it's only ever going to detect this exact object, which it, it's pretty much just a waste of time because there are other better ways of doing this. I originally thought if I could modify this mesh data randomly every picture that it might trick the model into detecting not just this Pikachu, for example, but maybe all different types of Pikachus that exist. So I played around with this a lot and I tried to deform the mesh in all different types of ways, but I really never had any success. So if anyone has any ideas on how to achieve something like this, definitely let me know down in the comments or shoot me an email. Anyway, I can at least tell you from my experiments what did work. First of all, having a ton of different background images definitely helped. So I ended up using 2,500 background images and generating 5,000 training images with 20% used for testing. It was also very important to change the position of the object in the image each time, as well as having multiple objects in each image at the same time. That was really important. I also scanned each object twice, so each Pokemon had two different versions of a scan. I ended up changing each object's rotation randomly, but only by like 20 degrees in each direction. Any more than that gave me poor results. I also did not use a directional light, but instead I just used ambient scene light and I modified that intensity randomly for every picture. The last thing that seemed to help a lot was changing the Unity window size before taking a picture so that all your images aren't the same size. That way you can run inference on different devices, different camera sizes, and that shouldn't have an effect. Now there's a ton of other things I wanted to try with this, but to actually see what works, you can realistically only make one change at a time. Now each change you make takes about a day due to training time, so you can see how absolutely frustrating this project was for me and why I needed to just make this video and get this project out of my life as quick as possible. I just really don't know enough about machine learning and this project literally drove me crazy. Ultimately, I can only get really the Bulbasaur and the Squirtle to track well. The Pikachu works sometimes, uh, but the Charmander just never works at all. This project is a bit of a headache to even get it running, so I'm gonna run through all the steps now in case anyone wants to try it out. So first of all, you need a good GPU to get this training. I have trained an object detector with the Google Cloud platform before, but it was kind of a nightmare to get it set up and working. So don't even try this on your Mac. With TensorFlow CPU, the training will take days. Here I was using TensorFlow GPU on this Windows machine that has a GTX 1070. Even with this thing, 20,000 tra 20, training steps took like 10 hours. So if you aren't scared yet, let's try to get this running on your machine. Now, I'll put all the links to everything I talk about down in the description below. It's really important that you try to stick with the same versions I used because I ran into tons of compatibility issues with this project and it was an absolute nightmare. So first of all, make sure you're using Python 3.5 64-bit. Install pip if you don't already have it. And now you need TensorFlow installed on your machine and also the TensorFlow models directory. You can follow the instructions to all that from here. It might be a good idea to use Anaconda in a virtual environment. 
In addition to TensorFlow, there's a bunch of other dependencies that you need, but I think you will want to stick with some TensorFlow version before 2.0. Personally, I use TensorFlow 1.8 and I installed it by running pip install TensorFlow GPU 1.8.0. I then got the models directory for TensorFlow 1.8 from here. Make sure you have OpenCV installed because we will use that to run inference on the model once it's done training. Now I installed it with pip install OpenCV Python. Once you have everything installed, CD into the models research and run setup.py build and setup.py install. CD into slim and run pip install dash e dot. Now grab my synthetic data project on GitHub and we have to create some data. So first you need some background images. So install the Fatcon batch download Chrome extension and download like a thousand images. Make sure to go into your settings and turn off ask where to save each file uh, and put them in a folder called textures with a capital T and then drag that into your resources folder. Now either download a 3D model of what you wanna track or create one. I use this app called Trinio. You put the models that you want to use as a child of objects to train and position them in front of the camera. Add a change transform script and an object bound script. Drag in the custom GUI skin from the GUI folder. Uh, open up the take picture script and change the total images to 2000 or something along those lines. And then go back to the root folder and open up the TF utils folder in a text editor. Here we need to just change the number of classes that you have in the test detection.py script and then in the coco.config script. Now go back to Unity and hit play to generate all the training data. Now once that's done, take your Unity stuff folder from your streaming assets and put it into models slash research. Open up the research folder in a text editor and go to Unity stuff slash TF utils and open the object detection notes. CD back into models research and run the protoc line and the set Python path line. Now CD into Unity stuff slash TF utils and run create tf record.py. Now copy the train.py command and run that. Now we wait for like 20,000 steps or so. Once you've trained your model for long enough, go to train output and find the checkpoint number that you want and put that number in the export inference graph line and run that. Finally, we can run test detection.py. All right, so that's it. That's all I got for today. If you wanna learn more about this type of stuff, um, definitely check out Jameson Tools article on heartbeat.fritz.ai where he used Unity to generate synthetic data to track Coke cans. And also check out Adam Kelly's project on Immersive Limit where he used synthetic data to detect weeds in his yard. So yeah, let me know what you guys wanna see in the next one down in the comments below. And with that, we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.